Let's stay with Take Two and dig a little deeper into these results with Super League Gaming CEO Ann Hand. And you heard Jess give us the setup here for Take Two. Uh, talk a little bit about the value of the Grand Theft Auto franchise because GTA V sold over 185 million units. What is your confidence, Ann, that the sixth iteration will be just as big of a hit? Well, I think the thing with GTA is that you can't deny that they have a massive amount of following, right? It is one of the longest standing game franchises and the people who are playing it are really proving that a lot of these game franchises went from being something you did when you were younger to being something that you don't grow out of. It's really a lifestyle interest. And I think that's so interesting in contrast to what's happening with really the next generation of, of gaming franchises, so to speak, or platforms which is instead of uh, game publishers serving up a game to you, instead you have platforms like Roblox, which are really out there putting all the tools in the hands of everyday gamers to make their own gaming experiences. So they, they almost start to look much more like um, social platforms than mm. they do that classic gaming. I really like what you said there about Grand Theft Auto being a lifestyle interest. Um, Jess had mentioned this as well, whether Take-Two and EA become M&A targets. What is your thinking on that now that the Microsoft Activision deal is set to move forward? Yeah, I mean, certainly I think you're going to continue to see consolidation across the space. You know, the gaming stocks in general have taken a bit of a hot, uh, hit. We're, Super League is on NASDAQ SLGG. We are not a classic pure gaming company, but we certainly do a lot of work with the biggest publishers of these top games. And I think that it's inevitable that you're just seeing valuations a bit depressed and a good opportunity there. Well, I, I do want to go back to this idea, though, kind of what we use games for. I mean, I came of an age where I did actually grow out of it. Uh, but but <laughs> well, but I mean, that's not a diss. I mean, it was just different. I mean, like I said, I mean, if you wanted to play a video game, not to date myself, but you had to bring somebody over to your house and they had to sit next to you uh, and play the game. And that was the activity. And now, of course, with it uh, being able to be done online uh, and have all your friends there, it is much more of a social activity. Uh, where the game almost to a certain extent becomes secondary. It's almost a facilitator uh, for uh, you know what, what these kids and adults for that matter are talking about. I do wonder though, if that is the structure or that is sort of the trend where we're going here and who does that favor? I would think Roblox would be in a much better position than say a more traditional game console type manufacturer like a Take-Two. Well, first of all, you're not dating yourself too much because my game was Galaga and I had to go <laughs> to the local bowling alley to play that. Um, but I think you've just nailed it. I think that when you look at where Gen Z and Alpha are spending their time, they really don't look like traditional um, gaming platforms. Um, you know, inside Roblox, there are thousands of games you can play. And a lot of the games are role-playing games. So like when we recreated Barbie's Dream House inside the metaverse in Q4, the primary things you could do is swim in the pool, try on clothes and DJ on the roof deck. Um, so these are really digital cul-de-sacs or hangouts. And, and the cool thing about it is, is that not only is it an extension of their physical life for this younger generation, um, but they're being encouraged to be a part of the creation process because it has a, a social interactive piece to it as well. And I, I just feel strongly these platforms like Minecraft as well, there's the foundations of STEM. These are the kinds of games that parents should really be embracing uh, their kids playing. Well, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I, I mean, I've always been somewhat skeptical. I, I have children and, and I, I've always heard the idea and that he's really into Minecraft. And I've always heard this idea that, oh, you know, he's learning. It's not just uh, him playing. Is that really true? Yes, absolutely. And he's watching so, right now. So you can, you can see. Yeah, well, no, he's going to like me then. No. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, in Minecraft, you go and you create your own worlds. You mm -hmm. go in with friends and you build a skyscraper or a volcano. You electrify it. So it is it is the underpinnings of STEM. You're learning about the basics of Java and coding. Um, Roblox, very similarly, if you think about it, it's not Activision or Take-Two that make the biggest games on Roblox. It's the everyday person who grew up playing Roblox, loved it, and now they are sitting probably... Yeah two guys or 10 guys in an apartment in San Diego making some of the top games in the world in partnership. So it has democratized game development. Right, those kids who started off playing Roblox have now become teens and young adults. How do you advertise to this audience? Because they grew up with on-demand, they hate traditional TV advertising. It's like they can't stand it, um, but they don't seem to be as offended by in-game advertising. So it's something that I think um, advertisers need to tread really carefully. It's, it's such a good point. I was just talking to somebody this morning about this. If you think about it, the millennial gamer, that hardcore gamer, 
was very averse to advertising and game. And usually it's because it was disrupting their experience, right? Mm -hmm. It was interrupting the way internet advertising does. But actually, if you look at Gen Z, 47% um, of the brands that they meet, they first are introduced to on a digital screen. So as long as that engagement is immersive and enhances the gameplay, they're actually very responsive to brands coming in the space. So Super League's partnership with Roblox is about us bringing our capability to create immersive experiences like Barbie's Dream House and couple it up with their new immersive ad products so that we can really leverage their additional scale to, to really get off the charts kind of ROI for advertisers that are seeking younger audiences. And the good news for Roblox too is they're aging up. So you're talking about 65 million daily active users, I think last quarter, 14 billion hours of gameplay. It's astounding. Wow. Um, and well, they can now meet pretty much any advertiser's goals when they're trying to reach that, reach that next generation. I think about Roblox and I think about how it was an early adopter when it comes to the metaverse. They, it feels like in many ways they kind of invented it long before Mark Zuckerberg changed his company's name to Meta. Is Roblox going to stick with the metaverse or does it pivot at some point to AI? Well, I mean, I definitely think AI and metaverse work together, right? I think that the power is, is that AI can further fuel the quicker development of metaverse experiences and content. Um, think of these as almost like virtual worlds or twins that can mirror anything in real life, whether it's a classroom, a Broadway show, a, a museum. So what Roblox has the capability to do is really create 2D and 3D worlds in a very extensive way that reflect all the things we enjoy doing in real life. I think certainly Meta put out a very bold vision of a fully immersive 3D world. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is that Roblox, Minecraft, they've been around for close to 10 years and they've already been teaching young generations to appreciate that 2D um, experience, that spatial computing feel that makes you feel like you're immersive and, and very customized into that experience. It, it makes so I think you're going you're gonna to keep seeing advertisers do this. I'll tell you why. 200 um, 3D content, when presented to young generation, has a 252% higher engagement rate. It's where advertisers need to be and how they need to talk to this generation. In the 2D, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, inter I, interesting. But then, I, why do you think then that there's been so much uh, discussion, or rather, for that matter, so much investment on the 3D side of this? I mean, what's the promise there? Why, why do you think people are, are sort of looking at that as the golden egg? Well, I think certainly, look, I think we all had a little bit of a reaction when we got the impression that we were going to maybe um, aspire to live permanently in 3D. That was a little overwhelming to think you want to live your whole life. Um, inside VR goggles. But you think about if you had an opportunity to take a fantastic class, um, get access to one of the best Harvard professors, maybe there'd be times where you would want to have that fully immersive, highest fidelity experience. Um, but really what Metaverse to, to Super League is about is really about the fact that there, the, the technology already exists today mm -hmm. to transform our whole relationship with the internet where no matter what dot-com site we get on, even if we're off those platforms, there's no reason that if we get on barbie.com, it can't feel interactive, personalized and customized. And that's how you build deeper brand preference and loyalty. And this was a great conversation. Hope to catch up with you again soon. Anne Hand there, she's the CEO of Super League Gaming, a look at the world of gaming on the back of those Take-Two earnings. Take-Two shares up about 3% here in 